Insights, solutions, and networking all come together at RSA Conference. Join a global cybersecurity community at rsaconference.com forward slash ITSP MAG24. Whether we are there or not, ITSP Magazine still gets the best stories. Plenty of conferences and events spark our curiosity and allow us to start conversations with some of the world's brightest minds. In person or virtually, Sean Martin and Marco Cipelli go on location and sit down with them at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Together, we discover what the synergy of these three elements means for the future of humanity. At AT&T, we simplify securing your most valuable business assets by providing broad cybersecurity experience and award-winning services. We manage the risk. You reap the reward. Learn more at cybersecurity.att.com. Marco. Here we go. The, the car is packed <laughs> in, the, in the shape of a plane. <laughs> or a bicycle, <laughs> or we can just walk it up. Well, well, well let's walk. Right. Maybe maybe a train would be nice. I don't know. We've not taken the train to RSA conference yet. You know, it, the the what we used to get there is not important. Is that we are on our way, you know, on some kind of a road in the air or you know, uh, in the countryside or in the desert. Doesn't matter. We're getting there, and what we do when we get there, that's the fun part. We chat. That's right. That's right. We. So, Somewhere along the way, we have a journey, <laughs> a chats on what we used to call the road, but chats on the road to RSA conference. Uh, and we're continuing this journey uh, with a good friend who's been on the show before and does amazing things with and for the community, including presenting and engaging with the community at RSA conference. And I'm thrilled to have her on the show as part of our coverage for our state conference, Jessica, thanks. Thanks for being on. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. So it's really, truly great to see you both again. So yeah. Yeah. It's been a while for sure. So exciting. Yeah. yeah. We, we want to know, know what's been going on since the last time that we, that we talked to you, which may be, maybe even too long. How about what, what's going on since the last conference that you were at? The RSA conference. Yeah. Um, it's been it's been a busy time, you know. There's um, I'm focused on right now, continuing to do the work of uh, supporting companies and supporting them and thinking about how they can grow their cybersecurity program. I've uh, been working with CISOs and providing some advisory service and helping them and thinking about, particularly if they're a first time CISO, thinking about approaching the role um, and also managing through some of the challenges within their business, um, but also um, having meaningful conversations with um, executives that are um, that are in other roles about uh, also thinking about cybersecurity. And, um, and I'm really uh, excited about what's to come, um, some things that we have on the horizon for later on this year. So possibly a course and a couple other things um, that I'm really excited about um, that will come further down the line. So it's been really, really busy and uh, I feel really grateful. And I, I, just feel, um, I just feel like it's really been a meaningful time and there's been a lot of meaningful conversations around um, the CISO role itself, but also how to, continue to increase, um, um, I want to say, kind of just confidence in, in what it means to take on the CISO role today. And I'm, I'm going to take a detour. Thanks for all of that. <laughs> you said something there that I want to uh, understand a little bit more. So you said talking to people in the role and then talking to others in the organization. I think something along those mm -hmm. lines. Is it yeah. others in the organization that want to be in the role or want to better collaborate with people in that role? Um, I, it's people in the organization that want to better understand cybersecurity and particularly how it relates to them in their role. So part of it really is also about helping them to also feel more confident about what it means, how cybersecurity impacts their role and how they can also better support cybersecurity. So I would say it's you can look at it almost two ways. 
Um, you could look at it as how can, you know, particularly me, um, if I'm on the side of um, thinking about it from building a cybersecurity program, how can I best engage uh, executive management to better understand security and how it impacts them in a way where they can truly receive it and in a way where they feel engaged and they feel um, like uh, they feel like um, they can see a val- the, the, the program in a, va- in a different way in terms of value um, and also how they see their role in it. I think that um, that's one of the key things that I that I think is absolutely critical because I think for more mature organizations, particularly organizations that have strong governance and they've had the role in, in their organization for a number of years, it's a different type of, of conversation than when you have an organization that has only had maybe one or two CISOs and they're still trying to figure it out. Um, one of the things the CTO said to me um, uh, quite a few times last fall is the CISO role is such a nebulous role such a nebulous role. I can't really understand it. And, you know, and so, and that's, that's, that person is not the only one. And so as much as, um, as much as I do talk about the CISO role itself and, and, and um, also helping my focus is to really alleviate the challenges that security leaders themselves have about the CISO role. One of the things that I've learned in this journey is the importance of also having a conversation with senior management so that they can better understand the CISO role too, um, and that they can be an a true ally for the role and for the cybersecurity program. Is it more or less nebulous nowadays? Yes. I feel that it is, you know, I think that it is less nebulous, but I think for those that have really not been engaged with uh, or have been around the role itself or had, have had the role in their organization, uh, particularly for maybe people that lead that area, if they're CTOs or CIOs or COOs, and they've kind of had someone within the organization that has been responsible for security, but not a CISO themselves, um, then I think that it can be very nebulous because now the thing is, is you have someone who, depending on the industry that you're in, now has a responsibility to report um, to senior management, you know, um, outside of just them, just that that particular role. You have someone who is responsible to reporting to the board in some cases. You have someone who is taking on responsibility that um, can be quite challenging for someone, particularly if they don't fully understand the responsibility themselves. And so as much as we um, spend learning in the organization or in the industry around this work, it's so important to ensure that partners that are there working along beside us uh, ha- or have uh, their own set of kind of continuous learning around this as well. Um, and I think that that's, you know, really part of the changing nature of the CISO role. It's not even, I think it's one conversation to talk about uh, a lot of the challenges that people talk about most, which is the regulatory piece, particularly the SEC and, and what we've seen there over the past couple of years. But for me, it's really the conversation with executive management because the the, the executive management really, I think, um, can really make the, the CISO role a comfortable place to be in an organization or a very uncomfortable place to be uh, for an organization simply based off their own level of knowledge and how to work with a CISO. Um, so the more we can engage senior management as well to be able to feel more comfortable with the role um, and to just allow a CISO to do what they're there to do, I think in many cases, it can be a, a much better experience for CISOs overall. It's less nebulous, but it's not a walk under a sunny sky either. <laughs> <laughs> well, what it, what it says to me is that, and I don't know, we're kind of off on a, a little tangent here, but I love it because the, the role was nebulous. I think continues to be a little bit as well. But with, with that is a ton of ambiguity, right? So you, you can't pin down somebody and, and the, the, yes, there's a absolutely. lot of freedom as a CISO to do what you think is right. And then a lot of trust in the organization to, to say, I I hope they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, So my question then is with, with less, I don't know what the right word is for, with it being less nebulous, (laughs) um, does that, does that kind of frame the role in a way that maybe gives the, the CISO a little less freedom to navigate some of these uncharted waters, but which, the, the threats continue to be somewhat nebulous mm-hmm. and certainly the regulations continue to be nebulous and technologies mm-hmm. continue to be nebulous. So mm-hmm. I don't know, do, do these, do these frames kind of, oh, I'll say pigeonhole is the word I was singing earlier as you were talking. Does, does a pigeonhole the role uh, to be less fluid, do you think? Um, 
you know, I don't think so. I mean, I think to your point of a lot of freedom, I do think that there is a lot of room for freedom and creativity actually in the CISO role. That's part of what I love about it um, is that there is a lot of room to be able to do what's needed in order to be able to create what's needed in the organization. But I do think that um, um, that it does also take a lot of, um, I think the points that you're bringing up, particularly around the threats that are coming in, I think it does take a particular attunement into those threats. So ensuring that there's a strong risk process in the organization, that there are strong processes around um, um, incident management and understanding um, and uh, well, also vulnerability management and being able to really understand what's happening in the organization. And I think it's being able to understand how how, what's going on in one organization versus maybe another organization that someone has had experience in and really being able to tailor their their strategy for that organization that can allow for, um, you know, the, I would say the freedom to do what they want to do to really grow the program, I think is, is important. So I think some of these things can be very nebulous. And to your point, yes, I think without a doubt, there's a lot of ambiguity. Um, and I think that, um, but I, I also think that that's that's one of these. That's part of the challenging role of being a CISO is managing through all of that. Um, and I think that um, you know it's in the management of that that um, you know where it can be extremely challenging. But I think the other side of the coin is it can also be it can also create a lot of freedom. So I do think that there is a balance. Um, and I think I think the challenge is managing that balance, which can be very very hard. And that actually goes into the talk that I gave last year at, at RSA it was really about the CISO role itself. How do we manage the fear? How do we manage what it means to take on this responsibility and navigate through the ambiguity that's there um, and, to, and all of these things that can feel very uh, nebulous? And, um, and what does it mean to also be able to um, stand in accountability or, uh, or responsibility, self-responsibility in managing that, um, how we show up and how we hold our own selves, uh, what I call responsible versus um, how others may uh, try to hold us accountable. Um, and, um, and and also how we know ourselves, you know, where where do we know where we are innately strong, where we maybe have an, an innate gifts that we are bringing to the program, but where are also our, our growing edges where we're not so strong and how are we balancing that out in the organization through the partnerships that we develop um, and also through the partnerships we create in the industry and the team that we build. And so I, so that I think that um, I think that's in some cases for a CISO where art, the art comes in versus the science to really to really be able to move forward to and create success um, in their role. It's really cool. So last year was uh, one of the top rated session at RSA conference. So congratulations <laughs> to that day. Yes, thank you. Obviously, all our friends there called you back because they, <laughs> they, they enjoy successful uh, conversation. So yeah. how, how do you approach it differently this year? I know you have a, a co-presenter, one, one friend of yours is going to be on stage. And what can yeah. people expect? Let's say it's not a, it's not a reply a replay of last year. So if I saw last year, can I come back and I see something different? Absolutely. And yes, you will see something different. Um, last year, um, the, everything happened really quickly in terms of how I applied because I just, um, I saw that the, through the emails that the registration was coming to an end. And when I went to, I, 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 the thought hadn't really even occurred to me to do it, but then something inside of me just said, you know, go ahead and apply um, and to talk about the CISO role, because I, I did feel that you know, there was so much, so much energy around the fear around just being in the role and we need really great people in this role. So I, I thought that it, uh, it just seemed like there was kind of this calling to just talk about the role. And that's, that, and that's exactly what that conversation was. Um, it, it was interesting to me to hear, to get into discussion with people afterwards. And they're like, oh, you're, you're talking about um, leadership and you're talking about, um, you know, someone said to me, you're talking about politics and handling politics in the organization. And I was like, really? That's what you took away? <laughs> and I just thought that that was really interesting. Uh, but I loved it. And I, in some ways, that, I mean, that's, that's true. That wasn't, that was, I wasn't thinking about it in that way, but it was very, very true in, in many cases. 
this this conversation is about the cybersecurity program itself, not necessarily just about the CISO role. So what are those core elements that go into a successful cybersecurity program that is extremely important? Um, and that no matter what, uh, you want to make sure that you're thinking about from a couple of different perspectives. And so um, myself and uh, Daniel Gorecki, who's going to be my partner in this presentation, we're going to talk a bit about that. And so we'll both be sharing from our lens um, as CISOs and to really kind of give context and also to share that every program is a bit different. I mean, obviously, we, we create our strategies based off the risk assessment. So it's being able to bring in some contrast to be able to show, OK, if this is something that's going to, you know, if something's going to be a priority for you and um, within your program, this is this is a way to think about it and, and a way to approach it. And is, is the goal. So I know I'm looking at the description you posted on LinkedIn, which I'll we'll include the link to yeah. this in the show notes. But uh, so you're going to uh, discuss the top three skills for uh, for CISO to, to advance their program, advance and grow the program, um, mm-hmm. but also what it means to be successful in the yeah. role as it relates to the program. And it's yeah. under the context of being a fearless CISO. So I'm wondering, yeah, what, what about the fear? Are you going to connect such that you can present those things? Do, do we... Do we take, how do we get rid of the fear? Do we embrace the fear? What kind of make that connection for me? Yeah, you know, I think the, and I think we've all been in situations and I think both in work and in life where we've probably been like, oh my gosh, you know, there is this fear that's welling up. But I think I'm thinking of a first time parent, maybe when they see, when they finally see their child for the first time, you know, there could, there's just, some, I have not had that experience because I'm not a parent, but I can imagine that that's just completely overwhelming. And I've, I've heard people talk about that. Um, and, um, and when you think about it from a work perspective, I think uh, no matter kind of what your role is, you know, being a leader, we know has its challenges and it can be really hard, right? It's that that thought of it's it could be it could be extremely lonely situation when you're when you're kind of at the kind of at the top or the boss. Um, and there's when you're a CISO, I think that that can be very much. Um, uh, I think it can be enhanced and elevated uh, because you're constantly really advocating for the program. Um, and you're advocating um, for what's needed. And a lot of times that can go against the business, even though you're always supporting the business, it can go against some business interests. And so it's constantly a bit of a challenge. And so there's no doubt at times, I think, just to speak your truth, just to be able to do what you're actually required to do for the role can, can bring up fear. Um, and I've talked to CISOs about this where they, they're they just basically trying to do the basic aspects of their job and, you know, just they're just sitting there and they're kind of shaking. And I know that because I've had that experience as well. I've gone into meetings where I've been shaking and I've just had to kind of calm down. And so I've had to develop ways for myself to be able to manage my own self going into a meeting. And um, but at the end of the day, you know, when you're constantly facing fear every day through conversations, through advocating for yourself and through the program, um, you know, that it's through and it's through that process where I think you do start to be able to build a great program. Um, I think sometimes where um, I think sometimes where CISOs back away from that, you know, maybe courage is an ass strong or um, something happens that causes someone to step back and maybe um, maybe not state the thing that they wanted to say or that was coming to them to say. I think that's sometimes where challenges can start. So um, because, you know, when you, uh, you know, I, I think that it's really important to always be the an advocate for the cybersecurity program and that we're always there advocating for the program itself um, and that we always kind of have to do, we have to have, we have to kind of have that front and center despite some of the challenges that come up within an organization. So, um, but how do we do that? And so we'll talk a bit about that, but yeah, managing that fear um, and embracing that fear to your point is, is absolutely key. And there are multiple different ways to do this. Um, um, but the, I think the part of one of the key things is, you know, which I do, you know, kind of say is it is, I, I do think it's part of the role. Um, and I, I think I have heard a couple of people when they're speaking, say they haven't experienced it. And I think that that's, that's fine. But I think, and I think that people have a wide spectrum of ways that they experience the, the CISO role. 
Um, and I, I think that for those that do experience it, and I think every role is different, so I think part of it could be they just haven't experienced it yet. Um, but for those who have experienced it, it can be quite overwhelming. So, uh, but that can't paralyze you from actually from stopping um, and not doing what you actually need to do to be able to move the program forward. So, um, and if there are, and what are those risks that, what are those personal risks that you're going to take um, to push a program forward or to challenge senior management on why something should happen, and what and what are things to think about when you're, if you're doing that? And so we'll we'll talk a bit about a bit about that and why no matter what, there are certain areas they kind of have to be able to push forward on to be able to have a successful program. Some of these things may feel like, yeah, well, we know these things, but it, but in some cases it's, well, and when you're in it, um, um, it you know, if you're in it and you, uh, it can feel almost like it's easier and safer to back away than to continue to push forward. And so the key thing is to, to remember to keep pushing forward. Yeah, I, I heard two magic words there, Marco, I'll let you go. I heard paralyzed and stop. <laughs> and I was I was half expecting to hear hear those words because um, personally yeah. paralyzed, which which then impacts and perhaps even stops the program. Well, yeah. after you brought us down with that, I, I, I was going to bring us up because I, I want to mention the the theme of uh, of the conference this year. As this is yeah. one of the first conversation that we have. Uh, on our chats on the road, and uh, this year is the art of possible. And so I'm announcing to Sean that a uh, tradition this year will be to ask to all our guests, uh, wh how, they, how do you interpret this theme, the art of possible? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you? And everybody, I'm hoping is going to have a different answer, but it's your turn to get it started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, when I think about what's the art of possible, the first thing that comes to me is creativity and creating something new, being able to create something that uh, that maybe hasn't been done before in a particular in a particular way. Um, and for me, um, that that is kind of how I see these series of talks. Um, and I think part of that is because the narrative of my own story and how I came into the CISO role is very different. And so how I approach thinking about this is is different. And I think um, and I do think that I tend to take risks um, and I look at risks differently, particularly interpersonally, because I'm, I, um, I work as a consulting CISO, not as an FTE. So um, the way that I think about the role is different. And so I, when I think about the art of possibility, I think about what it means and what it can be and how wonderful it could be if, um, if more people saw this role from that perspective um, and, um, were, and felt um, maybe uh, that sometimes the, 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 the fear that they have when they're sometimes in the role or even just sometimes the dissatisfaction when they, they have um, um, how that can be viewed from a different perspective just um, by looking at it differently. And, and that's really part of the intention and really a huge intention for why I, why I really feel the need to follow the call of, of speaking on this topic. And, um, and, I, um, and I think that that's a, just a, an, an important perspective to, to be able to not just have, but to, but to share with others. Nice one. Transforming fear into... <laughs> into uh, possibility, potential, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. Nice yes. one. Well, Jessica, yep. it's, it's always a pleasure. Marco, did you want to say something? No. All right. No, I'm good with this. I know. Great answer. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> well, this is, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm excited to hear that it, it was yet another uh, top rated session. Uh, it's uh, now you're in the role of fearless CISO. It's on uh, 6th of May, 220. Uh, it's part of the professional development, personal management track. And uh, you and Daniel are going to rock it. No, no question. No question. Yes. And then uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, physically on location in yeah, San absolutely. Francisco. Um, Marco and I will be there. We'll be in the broadcast alley. We'll be chatting with friends, making new friends, and capturing as many stories as we can. And we're thrilled to capture yours and share with our audience. And hopefully they'll they'll join you there for your session. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and follow us on our ongoing journey as we uh, continue our chats uh, on the way, on the road, on the way, whatever, to uh, <laughs> RSA conference. Uh, our Part of our on-location uh, coverage with Sean and Marco. 
lots of stuff going on and we appreciate you jessica all that you do and i uh, wish you great success with yeah. your with your session likewise thank you so much yep wishing you a great chats um, conversations on the way to rsa thank you so much for having me on this has been a lot of fun Yep, absolutely. We'll see you there, and hopefully we'll see a lot of you people. And if you don't, if you're not going to RSA conference, we'll bring you there anyway. That's uh, right. Video. Hop in the trunk. Yep. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe on the trunk. Tune on the roof. The, tune in the radio. The rack. The bike rack. You're welcome. Whatever. On the train. <laughs> whatever. See you, everybody. It's like autonomous Stay cars. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. See you. Uh, see you on the next one. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you. At AT AT&T, we simplify securing your most valuable business assets by providing broad cybersecurity experience and award-winning services. We manage the risk. You reap the reward. Learn more at cybersecurity.att.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Sean and Marco's On Location event coverage conversations. Please take a moment to give the show a good rating and leave a comment. Remember to share this podcast with your friends, family, and colleagues. Come back for more conversations and follow Sean Martin and Marco Cipelli as they continue their journey toward redefining cybersecurity and society. Insights, solutions, and networking all come together at RSA Conference. Join a global cybersecurity community at rsaconference.com forward slash ITSP MAG24.